Hello students, now let's start the topic of magnetostatics which is the first topic of unit 2. What does magnetostatics deal with? It deals with steady magnetic field. What is a steady magnetic field? Those which are produced because of steady currents. And steady currents is nothing but the DC current that you are already aware of. You know, a current carrying conductor always has a magnetic field associated with it. So whenever there is a conductor which is carrying a direct current or an alternating current, there has to be a magnetic field associated. If it's a DC current, then the magnetic field will be unidirectional. If it is sinusoidal, in that case, the magnetic field is sinusoidally varying. Now, a conductor is producing a magnetic field around it whenever any current passes through it, which can be seen here. There is a conductor lying along the z-axis and you have a flux which is associated in a direction given by the right hand fingers as they curl if the thumb is pointing in the direction of the current. This is known as Maxwell's right hand corkscrew rule. Which says that if the current is in the direction of the thumb of a right hand, then the field is given by, the direction of the field is given by the fingers curling in the direction of the field. So here you find if it's a dot current, dot means out. Dot means out, outwards, coming out of the paper. So if it's a dot current, then the flux is in this direction. If it's a cross current, cross means in. If it's a cross current, then the flux is in this direction. Before starting the main topic, let's uh, revise the terms which are associated with the magnetic field which you have done in um, uh, plus two. Or if you are a diploma student, you might have done it in, in, in your diploma course. The first thing is magnetic flux. Magnetic flux is denoted by phi. Its unit is Weber, denoted by WB. And basically they are the magnetic lines of forces. As seen, if it's a dot current, then these are the magnetic lines of forces curling in the anti-clockwise direction. These loops which are formed on tapping of the paper on which you sprinkle iron filings and the moment you tap it, it will be in the form of circles. And why this happens? Because when you tap the surface, then basically those uh, powders, those iron filings, they get raised a bit. And in the influence of the magnetic field, they tend to get aligned. So the magnetic lines of forces are curling. That's why it's uh, this way in which you get the magnetic flux. Now what is magnetic flux density? It is denoted by B. Basically magnetic flux density is magnetic flux per unit cross-sectional area through which it is passing. Provided the area which is under consideration is at a right angles to the flux which is passing through it. So here B is equal to phi over A. Surface area as we have done in various coordinate systems is a vector quantity. So the moment you divide a scalar by a vector quantity, the resultant quantity is a vector quantity. The unit is Weber per meter square. One Weber per meter square is also equal to one Tesla. And since area is having a direction, that's why B is a vector. Now we come on to the third term, that is magnetic field intensity. A very, very important term, it's denoted by H. What is its unit? Its unit is ampere per meter. H is defined as magnetomotive force per unit length. Now, what is magnetomotive force? It is a product of number of turns of the coil through which the current I is flowing. It is also abbreviated as MMF and its unit is ampere turns. MMF 
is n into i. This is the length, length of the path. As a result, now we can have a relation between b and h. Starting from the very basics, if there are n number of turns in a coil and i is the current, steady current which is flowing through it, then the MMF is equal to n into i, the product of number of turns and the current. Phi is equal to MMF divided by reluctance of the path. Now what is reluctance? Reluctance is analogous to resistance of the electric circuit. It is denoted by R, the reluctance of magnetic path. And if this is the case under consideration in which there is a coil here through which current I is flowing, the cross-sectional area of this is A. Then the flux phi which is created here is given by N into I divided by the reluctance of this whole path. So if the length of the path is L, area of cross-section is A and mu is the permeability of the medium, the iron, through which the flux is created. Then reluctance is equal to 1 over mu in, into L over A. Substituting this value of reluctance here, n into i divided by this quantity and taking mu into a up, you get mu n i a divided by L. Now as you know, n into i divided by L is h. So it becomes mu into h into a. Now we bring a to this side. So phi over a becomes mu into h. What is phi over a? B. So that gives you B is equal to mu into H. Here you can note down that mu is known as permeability of the magnetic material, which is the product of mu naught and mu r, where mu naught is given by 4 pi root 10 raised by minus 7 Henry per meter for free space. And mu r is the relative permeability of the material. A very, very caution to be taken. It is not a constant. Had mu been a constant, then the BH curve would have been a straight line. But it is not so. You are aware of it. Now let's see why BH curve is not a straight line. This is known as a permeability curve. How does the permeability, which is on the y-axis, vary with respect to B or H, you can say. As the current increases and magnetic flux is created in a material, initially mu rises. Later on, mu becomes almost a constant in this region, region 2. And later on, mu decreases in this way. So now let's analyze step by step all the three regions, 1, 2 and 3. In the first region, mu is proportional to H almost. Or in fact, it's increasing more than a linear way. So mu is approximately proportional to h. So b is proportional to h square. And hence you have a parabolic curve initially. This is a parabola. Later on, as mu becomes a constant. So b is equal to mu h. So b is proportional to h gives you a straight line. So here you have almost a straight line. Almost a straight line. Later on in region 3. As h increases, mu goes down. So b which is equal to mu into h now becomes a constant. And this is the region of saturation. From material point of view, you can explain saturation by the basic concept that when all the magnetic dipoles have been arranged in the direction of the magnetic field, the induced magnetic field. The material becomes fully magnetic. It cannot have a magnetic flux more than that. And hence, the value of B becomes a constant. Howsoever more current flows through it, the value of B will remain a constant.